Are you a digitally savvy or aspiring travel business owner wanting to shake things up in 2023? Then you need to join us for the Travel Trend Summit on the Gold Coast in May. Travel Trend is the ultimate one day live event that is hell bent on bridging the gap between our travel business owners and their untapped potential of successfully having a standout travel brand. Want more? Head to stephaniemyers.academy forward slash travel trend and grab your tickets now. Trust me when I say that this is an event you do not want to miss. Be quick as tickets are only strictly limited. See you there. Hey, I'm Steph and I'm obsessed with all things travel, marketing, branding and helping you stand out from the crowd. In just under two years, I went from being a home-based travel agent with zero clue how to make it work in the digital world to launching an international ranking travel podcast and creating an online course to help travel agents in lead generation. Here's one thing I know for sure, there has never in the history of the world been a better time to create the travel business you've always wanted. All you need is an actionable strategy and someone to show you the way. Picture this, we're going to spend the next hour of our time together at the Swim Up Pool Bar, where over a cocktail, we deep dive into travel-related topics, mixed with a little classroom training. This show is dedicated to encouraging you to step outside of your comfort zone and into your travel business. I'll show you how I did it and how you can too. Hit subscribe now and let's get into it. If you're a travel agent wanting to stand out in the digital world, but you struggle with consistency, tech isn't your jam and you have no idea where to start, join my free masterclass where I talk about exactly this. Head to stephaniemyers.academy forward slash masterclass. You're listening to Unplug in Paradise, the podcast. Hi, Beck. Welcome to Unplug in Paradise. So great to have you on the show with us today. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, we get to meet in person in a couple of weeks' time for the Travel Trend Summit. Can't wait for that. Oh, my gosh. I'm so pumped for that. (laughs) Two nights without my husband and kids. (laughs) The best time ever. (laughs) I know it's not about that. I know. Oh, it kind of is. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> hey it's the ridges hotel is like five minutes away from my house and I'm staying two nights away so amazing it definitely is about that <laughs> for me anyway so yes we are very fortunate to have you speaking as our brand design coach on the day chatting about all things branding and how we can use Canva as our number one design tool and um, help us with our branding as well so Beck, you've got such a diverse background in the entrepreneur space can you introduce us to what you do and yeah. how where, where you've um, been and how you've come to become a branding design coach? For sure. Okay, so I've been a brand designer for 20 plus years um, and also in that time we've started three gyms from scratch with my husband and my brother. We've since sold and moved on from those, but I really understand what it's like to be in business in today's climate, especially having just come out of COVID. Um, So yeah, so brand designer for 20 years, uh, owned three gyms. I worked for Canva for two years, which was amazing. And now I'm a Canva verified expert. I think I'm one of 42 worldwide or something like that. And I do speaking and workshops and coaching. And yeah, I'm really excited to be to be here today to pass on some of the wisdom from my past and uh, yeah, maybe chat about what's coming up in the future as well. And yeah, so oh, I'm a mum too. (laughs) <laughs> you love it how we forget that part sometimes you're like oh my, God, my career oh, oh yeah I know my mom no actually first and foremost I'm a mom to a six-year-old girl and a three-year-old boy and I have a beautiful husband and he's been away uh, on a work trip for seven eight days now actually so I'm very excited for him to come home tonight but yes being a mom in business running my own business you know when your kids come first um is certainly fun and challenging <laughs> so challenging and fun and I thought oh, yeah, I'm fun it's challenging and then it's fun and then it's fun because it's challenging 
<laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. But yeah, so and we very, very, very recently moved from Sydney. We uprooted our whole lives and moved to the Sunshine Coast. I'm super excited to be in Queensland with you, especially for this event next week. It's just a little trip down the highway. So yeah, it's cool. Be super fun. <laughs> yeah, it'll be nice to um compare coasts. See which yes. one's the best. <laughs> the Gold oh, Coast the or the Sunny Coast, Coast is so much better. Oh, come on now. <laughs> <laughs> now I've only ever been on holidays to the Gold Coast, so I don't know what it's like to live there. So. Yeah. Oh, well, southern end of the Gold Coast is a little bit different. I love it. And you'll be able to check out what the Ridges Airport Hotel's all about as well. Literally for those yeah. people flying in for the event, it's a yeah. 60 second walk from the domestic terminal oh, too easy. to the property. Like it's such <laughs> a game changer. Like no Ubers, no taxis, no transfers, no Very fighting good. for, you know, no fighting people to like get on buses or stealing other people's <laughs> like they do in Sydney. Everyone can just go straight to the bar for a cocktail. It's Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's a bar on the ground floor and on the rooftop. So amazing. Coming all back. <laughs> <laughs> and they've got flight boards all throughout those areas as well so if you are they don't miss your plane <laughs> no yeah so you can have a beer or, or a wine or sit there and watch the boarding gate open up then you can just waddle over <laughs> that's too easy I yeah. love that you've made it there you've made it super easy for everybody to come that's so good yeah well it kind of ties in with all of my branding which we'll probably go into today yeah awesome yeah so for us travel agents I suppose Beck, when it comes to all things branding the amount of times I get dms on instagram with proofs for people's logos is out there like I probably get one a week and you know I'm not a brand brand design coach I just kind of go all right well there's a lot more to branding than just a logo. Yeah, that's so true. I guess at the end of the day, though, you know their audience quite well, which is good. So you are positioned to give good feedback. Mm-hmm. And I think I think the audience side of things is something that uh, people typically forget about before they go and design a new, or do a brand refresh or um, go and design a new logo and visual identity and their whole brand that goes with that. Mm. So people often think that their logo is their brand and the logo only is a very small part of the overarching brand. Like your brand is actually made up of your vision, mission, values, purpose. It's your product, your service, your price, your positioning, Um, It comes down to your brand story, the relationships that you have with your customer. And then finally, there's also the logo, tagline, colours, imagery and typography. And it's that last kind of section there that makes up the visual identity. But that visual identity makes up part of the overarching brand. So it's quite funny when people uh, get in touch with me and they're like, oh, I need a logo and I need to put it on my business card. I've got an event next week. And I'm like, whoa, hang on, back up, back up. You know, there's so much groundwork and foundational work that needs to go into building a brand. Um, And the logo is uh, certainly part of that. And it's certainly the fun stuff. So people want to kind of skip all that hard work and go straight to the fun stuff, you know. So um, I'm not surprised that people want to do that because they're excited about starting a new business or they're excited about doing a brand refresh and, you know, the creativity side of things is super duper fun. And, you know, they, they, I guess to them DMing you, they're probably super proud of what they've created and they're just kind of looking maybe for some validation. However, it's very difficult for um, outsiders to give feedback on a logo because, the person that you're asking really does need to know well, who's your audience, what problems are you solving, um, what are the challenges and pain points of your customers and, you know, all of that sort of stuff and all of that goes into, you know, the foundations of, of brand building, I guess, at the end of the day. So um, it's interesting. I, I get the same thing and often it's along with, oh, my husband's brother's wife is an interior designer and she said I should do X, Y, Z. And it's like, she's not your target market. <laughs> so, so, you know, it, it, it is a very exciting part of the brand building process. Um, but, yeah, look, I'm not surprised they're asking you because you're so well-versed on what you do and you, you know this industry inside out. So, yeah, but it's, look, 
it's yeah. I have to say too, while we're on this topic, if if you are designing a logo, don't go and put it on Facebook or in some random group and ask people to pick from four different options. They're not oh, your target yeah. audience. I mean, unless they are, unless they are your target audience, of course. But um, yeah, I see that all the time. So mm-hmm. there's the DMs, there's the posting on social media, and unfortunately, people are picking logos based on other people's opinions, and it, you know they could be wrong. So you mm-hmm. could be doing yourself a huge disservice there. Yes. Well, I love, I love the fact that it's a safe space, you know, my DMs yeah. on Insta. Yeah, <laughs> It's exactly. a safe space to go, you know what, what do you think? I'm yeah. not sold on the cocktail glass or I'm not sold on the font or I'm not fo- sold on, you know, the wording or something like that, you know, all the colors even. Yeah. Or sometimes it looks too corporate-ish when they're trying to go for the luxury market. Mm-hmm. And like my response is, your logo is like an ornament on a Christmas tree. You are the Christmas tree. The logo is an ornament. Like <laughs> yeah. in the scheme of things, yeah. it's just, it is just what it is. And kind of, you know, like it's got to feel like you. Cause I feel like that's where a lot of people start, mm-hmm. isn't it? Like that's the starting point for a rebrand or a, or, you know, creating a brand for yourself. It starts for many people with just designing a logo but is that where it should really start, Beck? Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> Simple, no. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, no, you really need to be delving deep into your demographic. Like, who are they? What are they interested in? Um, look, I, I will say, though, if you're building a personal brand, it does have to be that element of you in that that uh, visual identity or that brand identity because it is representing you um, and you are also trying to attract an audience that you want to work with that you will like you know because let's face it sometimes we attract people that aren't the right customer mm. um, and it happens all too often in the travel industry yes. yeah I bet. Yes. yeah so <laughs> the foundational work does need to be there. Like like I mentioned before, like what are the values in the business? What, what's the purpose, the mission, the, you know, the, um, the drive behind it? What problems are you solving? Like you really need to know your demographic and how you're helping them and then build the logo to be in alignment with uh, what they are going to become to know, like and trust of you. So if you're building a personal brand, definitely has to reflect you if you're building a corporate brand or a business brand um and the identity part of that needs to attract a certain audience it needs to appeal to that audience and you may not actually like the fonts or the colors or um you know the 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 icon or what have you it may not entirely resonate with you but as long as it's resonating with your audience and you're going to attract the right customers Mm -hmm. that's actually what matters (laughs) at the end of the day however you know, these days a lot of people are building personal brands and uh, if you go and look at any of my visual identities, they're very simple. It's a serif-based font. It's often seen in black and white with a touch of pink because that's effectively all I wear is black, white and pink. (laughs) My husband says, oh, another black dress. How original. (laughs) I didn't have any pinks. You know, so... Like I think if you're building a personal brand, your visual identity aspect of that that entire brand piece does need to reflect who you are because at the end of the day you want to attract, like I said before, an audience that you're going to enjoy working with. So if you like the look and feel of your brand identity, then oftentimes the audience that you want to work with will also be attracted to that as well. So, for example, my brand, like I said, has pink, white, black and grey in it. So I often attract more of a feminine um type of clientele um and that can be feminine men as well you know it's not just male or female so um you know and oftentimes then the people I'm attracting I actually really enjoy working with so yeah Mm. yeah you are what you attract (laughs) oh sorry is that the is that the same you attract, attract what you are <laughs> you attract I don't know. You, are, sure which... <laughs> you are what you attract oh I think that's it I don't know I'll probably have to look that one up <laughs> there's something about a reflection and a you know you you there's something there's one that too it's like you see oh, what what you don't like often what you don't like in other people is something that you're actually projecting yourself <laughs> oh that's a hard pill to swallow <laughs> We're getting all um, wise here, but we're getting all our tongues tied. 
but actually really we're sleep deprived and we need another coffee (laughs) (laughs) because they're mums (laughs) oh my gosh I've got the funniest story to tell you so my daughter came in at 10 to 5 this morning and says it's like bang door open light on mum when you're in an ice cube like when you're inside an ice cube can you move your eyeballs and I'm like oh my gosh (laughs) Hang on. If they're not frozen, have a yes, you can. <laughs> First of all, how long have you been awake thinking? <laughs> and second, like, you know, oh my gosh, being a mum in business is challenging. And when you're getting woken up at 10 to 5 with, will my eyeballs move if I'm locked in an ice cube? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Just adds a whole new level of complexity to raising children and running um. a business. So, I know, you know, actually, right? this is an interesting part of um, building a personal brand. If you are building a personal brand and it's not just about the logo, it's also about storytelling and telling, you know, sharing with your audience who you actually are. And, you know, if you are a mum and you're building a business and, you know, it's really hard today, like tell that story on social media. You know, yeah. I think we've come so far now that we don't have to have perfect hair and the most amazing backdrop and, you know, like, like just be relatable especially if you're building a personal brand I want to attract people that are also probably parents that also get how hard it is and you know when you're running a zoom call and you know you get tech gremlins and something stuffs up they're going to understand <laughs> that oh, part of so life. understanding you know <laughs> when it comes to or, tech stuff know, I'm like yep it's a- happened to me <laughs> Yeah, or you have a little head pop up on the side from time to time and, you know, it's, it's just part of, of running a business as a parent. So if, if, if that's part of your life, tell that story and be open and honest and authentic in your content on social media because that's what's going to attract people who um, not only know, like, and trust you but also get and understand where you are in this season of your life and will be happy to work with you regardless of what's going on. <laughs> yeah it's an interesting concept though because like it's a question that's been asked for me too like do I feature my kids on my social media or on my business page do I give them a digital footprint and I'm like Mm. well that's completely up to you do they do they form part of your target market are they kind of in like are you are you relating to your audience because you have a child Mm -hmm. or are you just showing the you know photos of who you are as a as a business owner um yeah there's a few little things with that that I don't quite feel like I don't feel obligated to say yes or no like it's just personal preference really but I feel like the teachable content on my social media channels all comes from the podcast right so everything else is like a mixture of, you know, spending time with my family, hanging out with friends, whoever I'm kind of spending time with at that time. Like that's kind of forms who I am. And I've only just realized coming into 2023 that I need to embody that more Mm -hmm. because it's not all about, because I love Canva. Hey, like, (laughs) but it's not, I can't live there. I can't live in Canva. I know you'd like to because you are a frustrating designer at heart. <laughs> I've just seen your beautiful graphics that you've created. You didn't even even play a designer. Like you've done such a good job. So, yeah, I think maybe, you know, once you finish doing the whole travel thing in the next season of your life, maybe you should take up graphic design. <laughs> You're quite good at it. <laughs> Tick, thanks. <laughs> I'll, yeah, um... back to your, sorry, go ahead. I'll put your name on my, um, as my, one of my contacts. On your resume. Yeah. <laughs> she can vouch for me. She saw my stuff once. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, look, with having your kids on social media, you're right. It is purely a personal preference. I don't put my kids on there in any way to build their profiles. I, you know, will maybe it's a funny video. Like I've got one kid that's super coordinated, for example, and the other spot. And I, there's a series of three videos and it's the coordinated child versus the uncoordinated child. And it's just two, you know, funny things that they've done where one does it perfectly and the other one fully treats over. But, you know, it's part, it's part of my life. I, there is a side of me that's like I love laughing and I love making people laugh. And, and you know, I think when funny stuff happens as a parent, it's, it's 
funny to share that sometimes, you know, like my kids' eyeball story this morning. And, you know, it doesn't mean they need to have their faces on there. Um, again, it's entirely up to you. But um, I, I certainly don't, you know, I don't go intentionally putting my children on social media. It's just if something funny happens or, you know, something I think my audience will connect with or resonate with or, you know, or maybe I'm having a really hard day and, you know, life kind of sucks for a bit. And I just need a little bit of lifting up, you know, you know, sometimes telling a story or a video that relates to that is, is fine. And at the end of the day, if it's authentic and it's actually happening in your life and, and you know, it's, it's only really helping your audience get to know you better and better. Uh, but if you feel really uncomfortable about having your kids on there or even sharing parts of your life, just don't, just don't do it. Mm. You don't have to do it because you're building a personal brand. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And showing up all the time versus mm -hmm. not showing up at all. What are your mm -hmm. thoughts on it? Yes, I need to be better at that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not picking on you. <laughs> Look, I think we're all guilty of it. You know, yeah. like, for example, this morning I put together this whole reel and then I deleted it. Like I spent 15 minutes putting it together and because it wasn't perfect and because I'm a graphic designer and there's this whole side of me that oh, I'm also an ex-gymnast, so there's a very high level of perfectionism and I'm trying to unlearn that. Yes, um, so hard. I can relate. <laughs> I Yeah, I mean, I put time into doing this reel and then I just thought, just not good enough and I deleted it. And then as soon as I did, I just had this like wave of regret, like, oh, you know, first of all you've just wasted 15 minutes second of all who cares if it's not perfect you know mm. and anyway so then I got up and you know um was a mum <laughs> continued <laughs> on with my life <laughs> <laughs> got my kids out the door for school and kindy but you know you're right it, and being consistent is super important I've just taken a really quite a big career break I left my dream job at Canva in January moved my family to Queensland, we built a house. So we've just moved into that house. And, you know, all of that was a lot. Like, I'm not lying. It was a lot. There were some very um, pretty heavy, sad days in there. And it might, you know, like, you might hear that and, and sort of think, oh, you just moved to Queensland, you moved into your dream house. Like, what's sad about oh, that? No, but no, no, I also no. left, I left my family at home. Yeah. I left all my best friends. I left my dream job. Like my life basically got turned upside down overnight. And so I, I chose to take a bit of a career break. So those of you going to my Instagram account will see a lot of my family and my new house because that's the season of life that I'm in right now. And, um, you know, I'm doing some awesome work with Stu McLaren uh, with his launch at the moment for the membership experience. And um, I'm speaking at your event next week. So things are still happening However, I've, I've, I've chosen to take a period of time to be with my family and move into my dream home. And that's come to an end as of a week or so ago. And now I'm getting right back into things. But for a while and during that period, I felt guilty for not putting Canva-related or brand-related content on my Instagram because I felt like I was letting my audience down. I wasn't teaching anyone anything. I'm watching all the other Canva-verified experts put their stuff out there because there's been some awesome releases and then I have this like like guilt and so I'm like mum guilt and business guilt and Instagram mm. guilt <laughs> so, <laughs> and you have to you have to kind of get to a point and go enough like enough mm. you know who cares if I don't put stuff out on, on uh, social mm. media for this little period of time life will go on you know and as of like basically this week onwards things are starting to ramp up again so I'll get back there so I think it's super important to, yes, be consistent, but also secondly, realise and understand if you need a break, it's okay. Like it's totally mm. okay to take a break from branding, social media, putting yourself out there and, you know, and just being kind to yourself, I guess. So. Mm. Well, do you know what? Just from a consumer's standpoint, like even just like fellow brands on Instagram, for example, mm -hmm. if they're consistent with their you know, brand message and, um, you know, sharing tips and tricks and building their thought leadership and their authority online. And, you know, and they're quite consistent in it. But if they do have a break, because you haven't been stimulated by that particular brand, mm -hmm. 
in like maybe a week or a couple of weeks and you start thinking, where is that person? <laughs> but you know what? Like I think as a fellow business owner, you can you can read between the lines, mm-hmm. you know, and that it makes even like you don't have to show up all the time to make people think of you. Yes, it's good. And to build that, yes, yes, I'm here. But at the same time, I think of people, I go, oh, that person hasn't posted in a while. I'm going to go send them a little voice note and see how they are or, you know, maybe they're in this season where, you know, it's not for online, the online world or, yeah. you know, and I've been through very many periods of that. Like, yeah. You know, a lot of these weeks leading up to this event has kind of been like that for me like Mm -hmm. just the other night I had a bloody migraine and a panic attack and I was in the bottom of my bath having a meltdown and had my seven-year-old help me out you know like Mm -hmm. it's it's the season but it's not for online you know like we can talk about it now because it is part of the process and you know I'm I believe in just you know 100% transparency because there's people out there that are like you know what shit that's me too that was me (laughs) what time did you have your panic attack I had mine at this time like you know (laughs) maybe we can plan out together next time you know like it's um (laughs) oh gosh you know I yeah first of all I just want to acknowledge the work that you have done to put into this event it is it is next level and for those people that are coming along you are going to be blown away if you haven't booked your ticket yet you should definitely do that um but that aside you know that takes a toll on you as mm. a mum and you know a business owner and it's because you're running a business and you're still a mum and you're doing all the home things but you've got this other event that you're planning you know and a lot of time and effort goes into that and you know with that also comes problems and issues and other people's thoughts and feelings and their problems and issues you know so it's 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 monumental what you've taken on but um I want to acknowledge that you've done an amazing job and it's going to be epic and it will be all worth it and I'm really sorry that you ended up having a panic attack because that's not fun it's all right and (laughs) and probably highlights the need for people to acknowledge that you know business is hard it's damn hard and when your body gets to a point where it's sending you very strong messages you know it's important to listen and take take a break Mm, (laughs) so yeah and you know winding back to the social media whether you tell that story now or later as you are now later Mm. on um I think it doesn't matter if you're not posting business related content if 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 you're having a holiday or you're taking a break or you're moving to a new house or you're, whatever's happening, if you're kind of sharing a little story here and there, it doesn't need to be the finer details of everything that's going on, at least just staying a, a little bit top of mind and not disappearing entirely off, off social media. So, you know, like it's, yeah, it's, it's important to, I think coming back to it at the beginning of what we were talking about and being consistent is, it doesn't have to be on topic all the time. You can mm. share other parts of your life as well and just stay relevant and consistent that way. So although I'm taking a, um, uh, sorry, I was taking a career break, I was still able to share other aspects of my life and still keep my audience up to date with what was going on. But yeah, you don't have to share the ins and outs of everything right away. It can come as a a story later on I guess Mm, but they're still learning from you they're still learning about you yeah and who you are and where your place is in the world Mm -hmm. because I feel like at one point earlier on in the year like I was like okay cool I'm gonna share like weekend vlogs and stuff of me doing what I'm doing and then I was loving that so much that I thought oh how can I ever go back to doing podcasting I could just share lifestyle vlogs all the time I could just go to Coles (laughs) grab a trolley <laughs> do my weekly shop um and make a reel out of it <laughs> yeah <why not? laughs> this is fun this is fun because I'm in this like creative space but yeah then you think okay well this is this hurting my brand or um is this what my brand's about so you kind of got to you know get back on the tracks and realign but what are the biggest struggles that you see back in small businesses with people kind of not honoring who they're talking to and sometimes like in the Instagram world like I see you know there's particular travel agents out there that have obviously building their businesses but they're sharing such conflicting stuff information maybe they've got like a side business where they're like um selling makeup or they're you know doing something else but they've got it all mashed up in the one Instagram account yeah 
what can we share for those people to help them get across that? Because I feel like it's not only is it hurting their brand, their messages aren't clear, they don't ever really have a call to action on anything. It's just mm-hmm. it's just posting for posting's sake. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, look, I was a victim, what am I a victim? victim. <laughs> I was a I was guilty for uh, an for offender two years ago. <laughs> yeah, like so when when uh, I was a designer, but you know, and I was running my own little boutique freelance agency, but we ran three gyms. You know, one was a CrossFit gym, one was a big regular gym, one was an over 55 gym. So I've got three separate brands in there. Yeah. I'm a graphic designer, um, you know, and at the time I was also doing some business coaching. I'm, I'm all these things, you know. So when I would ask people, what, what do you think I am known for? They'd be like, oh, you're a... Um, a gym owner or you know at the time I was also doing articles for our local newspaper so they'd see photos of me uh, working out with you know hints and tips that my husband wrote as the head coach of our uh, fitness facilities oh so you're a fitness influencer Mm -hmm. (laughs) try again (laughs) so brand confusion is a real thing and I think people I think you hit the nail on the head people post for posting sake and I think this is where it's really important to come back to the foundation of and the fundamentals of what your brand is and so if that's you as a human being so take me for example you know I have four or five content pillars one is Canva one is branding one is being a mum one is being a small business owner and one is just general life, you know. And so I post information, content, um, uh, funny stories, you know, from my family in alignment with those pillars. But at the end of the day, you're getting an insight and a view into my life at the same time as me teaching and coaching you on how to use Canva or how to choose a font or how to choose your brand colors or, you know, something like that. When you start adding a whole other product in there, so say I, say we went and opened another gym for example and I start going oh here's our gym that we're opening it just gets muddy and confusing Mm. as hell so um I'd highly recommend that people first of all in their business world look at what is earning you the most money as well as what lights you up what are you passionate Mm. about what do you want to do and pick whatever that is and focus on that thing first and so if you are selling makeup and, and other stuff you know as well perhaps that needs its own Instagram account with a separate brand so you've really got to dive headfirst into what the fundamentals of your brand are and then start building not only the visual representation side of that so logos colors fonts, imagery etc but the content side as well and what what are your main pillars around that content and just stick to those it's actually really very simple it's like um who's your audience what problems do they have uh what are their pain points? How can your service or product solve that for them? Mm. And who are you and what do you value in your life? And they're the things really that you need to be kind of creating content on and that you should be building the base of your brand around. So Mm. if that's one thing, say Canva, branding, graphic design, then you go and add a gym into it or makeup or whatever, then your audience is just deeply confused. <laughs> so mm. you're only doing yourself and them a huge disservice. So yeah. yeah, I would take things back to basics. Look at what's earning money, what are you passionate about? Um, how can you build a very strong brand and messaging imagery and content around that one mm. thing? And go ahead and do that. And then yeah, just sprinkle little bits of your own life in on top of that. So mm. Yeah, well, it it brings it brings it into the fact that we are evolving all the time as well. So to honor things as they come. So if you are picking up a different side hustle and things like mm-hmm. that, and it might just be that thing that's taking your mind off. You know, if you are in travel and you're thinking, okay, cool, travel's just going ballistic, but this excites me. Like just honor that stage where you're at, rather than trying to blend the two, because it is confusing, and especially if you know, you've got to put yourself in the shoes of your consumer as well. Like if someone's found you, if someone's come to you as a referral and they're like, cool, 
I'm going to uh, stalk them on social media first, which no one ever pretend that that's not a thing because it is a thing. I bloody Google phone numbers whilst the number's ringing me on my phone. (laughs) 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 And, you know, it's, it's the same thing. Like that person's ringing or that person's messaged me. Like, say, for example, LinkedIn, if someone's come through on LinkedIn, sent me a message, I'm like, okay, who are they? I'm looking them up on Insta. Mm Mm-hmm. It's like the the digital phone phone book, but with faces. Yes, <laughs> it's pre stalking your possible uh, connection or audience member. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and like you pick up a couple of like a few little things about them, but if you make it so hard for them to learn anything about you, or if it is just confusing, they won't they won't worry. Like they'll mm-hmm. go, no, I can't get a read on this person. Yeah. I don't know what it is that they do. I don't know who they serve. I don't know whether they're the right person for me. And I feel like you can lose them in a matter of seconds when things aren't in alignment. Yeah, 100%. I, you know, you have three seconds when someone lands on your website or looks at your Instagram bio or your LinkedIn profile to, to resonate with that person. So, you know, for example, if someone's looking for branding in Canva, they go to my website and they see in that very top section that prime real estate on your website, oh, she's an expert in Canva, she can solve my design needs, awesome, I'll get in touch sort of thing. But so many people have wishy-washy crap on their, you know, bios and their the, that top section of their website Mm. And they're losing customers, you know, straight away, or they're not resonating. And they could be a perfect match, but the messaging, the imagery, the, you know, what it's actually sort of trying to convey and uh, the fact you're trying to solve someone's problem. If that's not there, then you're going to lose them at the end mm. of the day. And we don't want to lose people. <laughs> Especially if it's something and, that could be helped, you know. Well, that's right. And it takes a lot of time. Like think about the time and effort that it's taken to attract that person to actually finally land on your website or go to your social media profile, whichever platform that may be. Like it, it could have been four or five or six or 17 touch points to actually make them get there. So once they finally get, once they finally get there, don't lose them. <laughs> like make sure you have, messaging that cuts through the noise make sure you have imagery that stands out or if you're a personal brand you know I use the same photo on everything I do because it builds recognition that photo Mm -hmm. needs to be updated shortly and when it does it will get changed across everything I do you know so it's at at the end of the day it's about building uh, trust through repetition of you know the same messaging the same imagery the same color same font same you know, same everything, you're safe, sol- solving the same problem. And if you have different brands or different products or different services that are conflicting against each other, you can't tell that same story or have the same imagery mm-hmm. or, you know, have the same messaging. So therefore the brand is just kind of diluted at the end of the day. Mm. Hey, I feel that honestly in my bones. I've got a podcast, I've got an online course, I've got a you know, academy, and then I've got a travel business. I've got so many things. We need to chat more. (laughs) (laughs) On that, I had a a really good chat with a beautiful lady. Her name's Tessa and the brand is uh, Enhanced Sleep. She teaches mums to get their babies and toddlers to sleep, you know. And we had a chat the other day and she said, oh, I'm just not, I'm not really not feeling it with my, my brand identity. Like, you know, I'm not really sure what's going on. We had a look. And actually what she's doing is phenomenal and her content is awesome. All she was missing was a strong call to action and a really, and and displaying her lead magnet. So she was putting this amazing content out there and then not telling anybody to do anything with it. And so what's really important, especially when you have lots of different program services, et cetera, with your social media, your website, everything, keep your call to action almost the same across everything you do so it could either be get in touch or download my lead magnet or click to sign up here whatever it is um, and usually it's your your free offering or you know a, a book a call for example what whatever the uh, lowest barrier to entry is mm-hmm. um, pick that and have that across everything that you do so when you're looking at sort of the journey of a customer it might start with they've consumed some of your content 
um, you have a strong, strong call to action on everything. So you're leading them to one lead magnet. This is just an example, but uh, call to action, lead magnet, they get on your list and then you start to email them. Not only that, you're emailing them, but they're also starting to see more and more of your content across different platforms. They're starting to get to know, like, and trust you. And then they start to go, well, geez, you really know your stuff. So what else do you have? And then, you know, all of a sudden you're doing a launch for a little mini course or, a, you know, a big signature course or your membership or whatever it is. And you're kind of taking them on that journey. And it's okay to have all of those different products and services because what you do is really all in alignment with mm-hmm. the one thing at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, just keeping that customer journey super simple. And if, if they're coming in and you've got 15 different lead magnets and then they're getting emails for, you know, three or four different products, they start going, what is it that you do? Like, I don't understand, you know. And I've seen even huge, big influencers do this. You know, you get their lead magnet and then you go on their nurture list. But then all of a sudden they're doing a product launch for something and you start getting those emails. But then their content is talking about something else and it's like, are you launching something or like what is what are you selling me like like Mm. I get that you can do what you can do but how can you help me solve my problem that I have today you know Mm -hmm. and it's certainly not going to be in over consuming content and emails you know so (laughs) sometimes it's just about taking a step back and going okay let's really simplify this customer journey and then at a certain point you get to kind of a point where you go all right, where are you in your journey and what do you need help with now? And that's when you can splinter them off into these other areas. And that just comes down to the way you set up your automation and digital marketing and things like that. But, mm. um, yeah, let's not confuse our audience. Yes, <laughs> make place. it simple. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What's that saying? It's not as wise as the one we were trying to say before, like keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> yeah, keep it simple, stupid. And, and it really is. Like it really, yeah. really is. Like you could mm. make it so simple that, the only call to action is download my lead magnet or the only call to action is book a call with me and that's it from that then customer touch point on then you nurture them through the other things but you know um of course except separately when you are launching something of course you're going to talk about that and of course you're going to get them onto webinars and whatever and whatever it is that you're doing in your business at the time but for the majority of the time your general content should lead lead people to one place and one place only and that's why the yeah, get my lead magnet, book a call, buy this $7 product, whatever it happens to be. So Yeah, yeah. Well, I feel like the travel industry is moving into that digital era now. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm so here for it because this is what I am so passionate about. But at the same time, like it's it's a hard thing to get there because our industry is incredibly outdated. Like mm-hmm. we are still doing things that travel agents were doing 30 years ago yeah right and something that came up in a recent um oh well it wasn't recent it was probably over 12 months ago a market research call is Mm -hmm. that there was a travel agent in Sydney still doing the mailbox drops so designing their flyer in Microsoft Word printing it out using their computer ink spending time folding them all and then going out there on the streets and doing the letterbox drop I don't know about you, but when it comes to that overconsumption, whether it's in our emails or in our letterbox, it goes to the same place. It goes to the bin. It goes, you just grab it and you just think, okay, go. But see what I'm trying to, you know, highlight is the fact that we don't need to go to those extents anymore. We don't need to open up Microsoft Word and design something. We have Canva. (laughs) Why would you use? that product when you have hey, hey. <laughs> I used to create all my posters when I was in a retail space I used to create all of my posters in Microsoft Word and but I used to do any better at the time, brilliant so. job no that's right I didn't know any better now I do so while people know better <laughs> this is where that education piece comes in <laughs> yeah yeah um so yeah so Canvas the one-stop shop in case you didn't know, Uh, Mm -hmm. but then also you don't need to spend so much time. Like it's not a good return on investment at the end of the day. Like how is that a return on investment? You might get one person put it on their fridge until it loses its colour. Do you know what's funny about this? 
I'm gonna I'm gonna say something that kind of contradicts you, so you're probably gonna virtually slap me. But no, here's the go. thing, right? <laughs> Sometimes it's about cutting through the noise and standing out. And I think if I received my mailbox, this awful design thing that was printed off a bubble jet printer, I probably would take a minute to actually look at it because it's so bad compared to everything else. So mm. maybe it's a you know maybe it's a strategy that they are like what's this? That, you know. <laughs> Whatever it is at the end of the day, in this day and age, whether you're sending emails, doing mail um, or, you know, creating social media content, you have to stand out. You have to find a way to cut through the noise, you know. And um, if people are wanting to do stuff in the letterbox, I always suggest doing lumpy mail, like something that that, that isn't in a letter, you know, something that mm-hmm. feels different or looks different or, you know, <laughs> maybe oh, it was the hand-folded. Microsoft Word design thing but but you know um I have to say I get far less mail these days like since we've moved in here I've had um two real estate agent brochures and that's it haven't even received my mail from home yet so you know to actually get something nice in the mailbox and I'm not talking about the Microsoft Word thing I'm talking you know to actually get something interesting in the mailbox is is uncommon these days um, mainly because it costs a lot of money to do but mm. if you want to stand out send people something cool in the mail like that's really great to do yeah it. yeah you yeah, know no. social media is getting very uh you know it's already overcrowded you know I barely look at my Facebook anymore I used to be obsessed with it and um you know now I only jump on there if it's for a specific reason I think so you know um but yeah so I don't recommend that people use Microsoft Word and print it out in their bubble jet printer but but certainly find a way that's going to stand out from your competitors for sure Mm. so yeah yeah but um I was thinking too while we're talking about personal branding for travel agents especially like ones that are working for bigger corporate brands um, considering starting to build their personal brand if they haven't done so already is is really important and there's actually no better time than now to do it so mm. even if you work for um, you know one of the majors one of the big big agencies there's no reason why you can't use yourself your content your knowledge on your social media platform to inadvertently bring customers to that brand and you'll have to educate me Steph do do travel agents get commissions or you know is there any benefit for bringing customers to a bigger brand yeah so say for example if you work for yourself so if you're an independent you know travel business owner or contractor you do earn your commissions but you're yeah. you work on a commission base only yeah. but yeah. if you do work for a retail store you generally work for an hourly wage which is incredibly low Mm-hmm. And it sucks, but at the same time, your incentive is to, you know, make your cost of seat and then whatever you achieve above that is commissionable and then you can okay. earn like an extra cut um, okay. of that commission. So okay. there is like more earning opportunities, but in my experience, like you may have to achieve your cost of seat for, you know, three months in a row mm-hmm. and then whatever you've um, made on top of that will just come through to you as a bonus. So okay, cool. sometimes you can't predict what the market's going to be like mm-hmm. and, you know, anything could happen in that month or whatever, like it's, and then yeah. it just loses, you lose your chance. Even if you've had two really good months out of three, you don't get, you don't get your commission if it's not three consecutive months. So it's really hit and miss. There's no reward for anything that you do in your business other than monetary. Mm-hmm. So if you do really good sales, so that's the only mm-hmm. reward is if you do good sales. Uh-huh. How you get okay. those sales is a completely different story. Like you okay. could, yeah, yeah. But it's hard. Like that's just what it's like, you know. You're yeah. in a, and if you've got, you know, if you're competing against, you know, sister stores, and I mean like stores that are named by owned by the same owner, really close together, maybe in the same town or in the, you know, mm. next suburb over. It's basically like a horse race. Yeah. You know, okay. That person's coming in the lead, you know, this one's, you know, chomping at the bit. Like, oh, it's just, it's, it's a, it's a really uh, toxic culture mm-hmm. because the only thing that they're placing value on is how much money you can bring in the door. Okay. 
Yes. So when it comes to branding for those particular people mm-hmm. in a retail space, there is so much potential to cut through the noise and be really like be that icon in your office. Yes, absolutely. So like yeah. she's the social media girl. She's the one that, you know, attracts that, but yeah. it's not really, uh, well, yeah, it's it's never something that's kind of like everyone here needs to be on Instagram and have yeah, that okay. individual thing that they're creating, but it's the agents that are actually doing that, mm-hmm. that are having good traction because they're being recognized and they're like, oh, there's that 100%. girl. There's yeah. that girl. I saw her on Instagram. Yeah. She's the travel agent that I want to speak to. So they'll sit on the lounge in that office and wait for that person to finish up with their string of customers out the door yeah. because that's the person that they've resonated with. And if they were to talk to anybody else, it would be like, um, no. <laughs> oh, 100%. And, yes. and not only resonating with them, at the end of the day, you know, at the end of the day, I can go book my own travel. But if I have someone that I deeply trust and that I know knows that product inside out, you know, maybe they're the Bali specialist or maybe they're the Hawaii specialist and that's what I need right now, I will also sit on a lounge for an hour and a half waiting for the person to become available because if that person can get me not only a great deal but I know that my flights are going to be connected, my hotel is going to, you know, my bookings are going to be seamless and I know this because I've seen this person talk about these things on social media I'm going to book with them. I'm not going to book with, you know, anybody else in there, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, building a personal brand, regardless of who you work for, is so important, especially in this day and age, you know. And also to, um, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this or not, but I'm going to go ahead and say it anyway. But say you work for big corporate business A, right, and you build your personal brand. Oh, sorry, and you, you don't build your personal brand and you lose that job, then you go and work for big corporate business B, you can't take, I'm imagining contractually, you can't take your customers with you and that sort of thing. However, if you build your own, say, Instagram profile and you are the Hawaii specialist and Mm. you lose your job at corporate business A and you go to corporate business B, your audience can follow you because you're not reaching out to them. You're not targeting, sorry, you're not reaching out to them like through corporate emails and things like that, I mean, Mm -hmm. but by you educating an audience, they will follow you inadvertently. So, Mm -hmm. you know, it's also a really great way to future proof your career, I guess, as well. And then if you ever went out on your own as well, you've also got that, um, you know, that audience as well. Now, if you are a owner of big corporate business A or B and you're listening to this and you're freaking out that your uh, personal brands within your business are building their personal brands and that one day they might leave you, they might. But, you know, if you're a business owner, uh, especially one of these big corporate brands, you should be encouraging your team to build their personal brands because inadvertently it's going to bring more business to your business. So, Absolutely. Absolutely. Being seen in the marketplace for you rather than hiding behind a a logo or brand Mm -hmm. colors or, Mm -hmm. you know, just being branded like everyone else. And the only differentiation is postcode. 100%. I'm here for it. Yeah. And that's coming from a, from a brand design coach. (laughs) (laughs) But I think also too, travel agents should, and maybe they do, and maybe I'm making an uneducated statement here, but travel agents should specialize in one, two or three things, you know, they should be the go-to person for something particular. It could be luxury cruises, it could be Hawaii, it could be, you know, whatever it is, you know, trips to Kathmandu, whatever it is, um, you know, they say in America with the American accent, the riches are in the niches and it, which for us means niches. So, you know, if you can niche in a specific area and be really good at that and become known for that thing, then you are going to bring in so much money to your business that <laughs> you're going to be rolling in it. So, you know, so, yeah, I mean, and, and building a personal brand and being good at that one thing and going back to what we were talking about in the beginning, building those fundamentals, you know, solving those problems for that customer, you, you know, you're going to be leagues ahead of anybody else that doesn't bother doing this right now and look if you're looking at other tra- travel agents who are doing this and they've got huge followings and you're thinking oh they're already doing it I'm too late you're not <laughs> you're never too late and the reason is 
there's no one else like you. So they are buying you. They are being they are attracted to you and your content and what you're selling. So yes, you can be a specialist in Hawaii, and so can this person over here with 12 million followers. But they're not you. So you can start building a personal brand today. You can start attracting your audience today. You can also specialize in there's billions of people. That, sorry, millions of people that use Canva. You know, so that's a there's huge competition out there. But there's no one else like me. No, so you know, I don't think be afraid of what's or feel, feeling like you missed the boat and you haven't. So. Mm. Oh, beautiful, wise words. Thanks, Beck. <laughs> so how can we find you on Instagram? What's your Instagram handle? I am branded by Rebecca Flint on Instagram and Facebook. And my website is RebeccaFlint.com. So very beautiful. easy to remember. Cool. Yes. Well, looking forward to seeing you next week at our event. Yes, can't and wait. I look forward to taking you out for a Bella Rosa cocktail at the Tapas Ooh. Place down the road. <laughs> very excited. Beautiful. Thank I'm you so much. have two child-free evenings. I know. <laughs> me too. <laughs> High five. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks so much for having me, Steph. Take care. See you soon. <laughs> Bye.